Hello again, my mate Vince here, and in this video today, we're gonna to try and look at why the heater's not working in this car. There's no fan coming on at all when you turn it on. So uh, yeah, should be fun. Is it gonna be switch related? Is it gonna be motor related? Who knows? Now, I might not go yet into, the, into whether or not heat's coming out. I just wanna hear the fans working to begin with. Maybe the heater is gonna be blown out hot air, I don't know, or maybe there's gonna be a problem with that, but let's see if we can get the fans working to begin with. When I bought the car, they did tell me that the heater wasn't working. If you have a look in here, let's get a run. It isn't doing anything at all. So you see here, There's no noise, no matter what setting I put it on, there's no noise coming out whatsoever. And when I had the engine running earlier, there was uh, nothing coming out there either. Let me just go to this side here, and let's see if that makes any difference. No. Okay, so, could be the switch, maybe it could be the fuse, maybe it's the motor, if you have a look under here. I've already got the uh, bonnet open. I haven't looked in the workshop manual yet, but this here seems to be to do with the heater, and I think this is gonna be the motor, so maybe we can check for 12 volts on this connection here. Hopefully you can see that, I'm not sure if the sun's in the way or not. There you go, you can see that. No, there's nothing there at all. Right, okay. Part of me is wondering whether the fan only works so with the engine running. Do you know what, I'm going to start the engine, just to see. No, nothing's happening. Okay, so there's no power getting to the motor. So maybe if power was getting to the motor, it might kick in and start working. If it hasn't been working in years, it might be seized up, I don't know. Right, so let's just fault find this in the normal way. So I've cut the battery power now. Let's just check for contacts on the switch, see if they're making contact. And first of all, I suppose, let's check the fuse. Right, I've just come over the other side of the engine bay and there's a load of relays here and it does say down at the bottom ACU fan speed and we have a one, two, three, four. So all I've done is I've just lifted each one of these relays up. You can only put them back in one direction from what I can see because of the way they've been uh, aligned there. But every single one looks okay. You know, there's some markings on them, but it definitely looks like there's you know the contacts are clean so i don't think the problem's there unless of course it's the connections down here which may be possible anyway let's check the fuse on the inside right i'm just gonna look through here see if there's anything about fans right we've got one there a6 that says acu fans so i suppose we'll check that one a6 so it's that one out on its own, at the very top here. I'm not sure if you can quite see that or not. I'm just going to go to continuity and unplug that fuse. This fuse does not want to come out. Wow. There we go. Now it looks okay. What's it supposed to be? 30. Yes, and it is a 30, yeah. Yeah, that's all okay. Right, so let's pop that one back in. 
So it's not anything to do with the fuse. We don't yet know if voltage is getting there or not. Should we uh, check out the switch next? I think we should. Right, so as you can see, it's a bit of a strange setup here. We've got wires going around the bottom and then there's just one wire attached to here and then there we move it around. So I don't really know how it's working at the moment. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get the multimeter and maybe if I go between this one here on its own and then the different ones, I might get continuity when I go to the appropriate switch. So what we have, one, two, three, four, five, so we've got six, but have we got six settings here? One, two, three, four, five, six we have. Interesting. So I'm thinking it should be one of the outside wires to the inside wire, but let me just measure that and then uh, I'll film the results. Right, it's really, really, really obvious when uh, when you look closely at it. So, I can't get it to stay still. You need three hands. Now, we've got all the points around the edge here. So, yes, it does go between this one here. So, anything on this top rail, this one, this one, and this one are all in contact with each other. And when you have the switch all the way around this way over here, it's going to be between this one. So, I was just going between here because it's the same as this, yeah? So it's between this one and the grey wire. Then when you move it round one, it's between this one and that grey wire with a bit of brown. And if you zoom in, you can actually see it really makes sense. Can you see a tiny, tiny, tiny copper thing there that's covered in black stuff? Can you see it moving there? There. And then it moves on to the next one, yeah? You can just see it moving there. So, uh, yeah, there's continuity between every single one. Let me just show you one of them. So if we're all the way over here, we're going to have continuity between here and here. Yeah. And then when we move it on to the next one, we will no longer have con continuity there and there. It's gone now, but it will go to the next one. Yeah. So it's, uh, yeah, they're all working. Yes, I will spray some cleaner in there, but they are actually working. So I think what I'm going to do is, I think, where's it go to after that? It goes into here. And then we're two up, probably into the loom. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to have a look at the wiring diagram for this because then it will make more sense whether or not there's other relays and stuff or from here does it go to the engine, I'm not too sure. Let me have a look and see if I can make sense of it. So there's not much to the wiring diagram here. I just think it's going to be extremely hard to fault find this one because it just goes through so many parts of the engine. And also there's like a, a circuit board to deal with as well. Now, annoyingly, it's it's hard to kind of read this because it's over two pages. So if I go there, so we've got this bit here and then it goes over to the other page. But what I'm interested in is this splice here because it just goes off in so many directions. So it could be to do with that. But I think what we need to do to begin with is check the fuse to make sure we're getting 12 volts because we should have 12 volts going through the fuse. Then it goes down to something called a resistor pack type thing. So number two, if I go uh, here, number two is air conditioning, oh no, air conditioning unit microprocessor. Sorry, I think, well, what's this 27 here? Oh yeah, air conditioning unit resistor block. So this is the resistor block here. So we have a, a unit microprocessor and I think that is stored, it looks like, the central console so underneath the fans here somewhere around that area so uh, luckily I have the center console already undone so we have to check that that out there's loads of relays so we have the four relays here which are fan speed relay one two three and four they're all fan speed but then we also have a fan control relay a water tap relay and a compressor clutch relay because this is to do with air conditioning you see so uh, and also the fuse is f1 in the a1 location so uh, i don't know how i missed that it must have said air conditioning and uh, yeah so i think we need to measure 12 volts from here i'm wondering if it's this microprocessor which has gone faulty which is possible so yeah let's 12 volts at the fuse and then let's see if we can find this microprocessor also, the wiring diagram showing two motors, right and left hand. So, uh, we already know about this one. So, it must be mirrored on this side over here. Which it is. Now, why didn't I see that earlier when I was looking down here? Right, sure enough, the workshop manual is correct because under A1, we have a four amp fuse. It says ACU. So, that's like the main fuse coming in. So, what I looked at before was 
ACU fans, which was A6 over this side. So, uh, yeah, this is the main one coming in, and then the actual fans themselves have their own fuse. The one coming in only has a four amp fuse. So let's check that out. And ACU obviously means air conditioning unit. Mm, right, that fuse looks fine to me. Let's go to continuity. It's okay. Right, so it's not that. Let's see now if we have voltage coming into this. So let me pop this back in. Do it the same way as all the fuses uh, over here. I do like this fuse board here, it's nice and easy to get to. Well, I'm just gonna turn the battery on and we'll see what voltage we have there. Right, let's go to volts DC, hopefully you can see that. Got a nice light there to uh, light it up. And I'm gonna use that as my ground or negative. And let's go up here. No, we don't have anything. But saying that, if it's air conditioning, does the engine have to be on? Probably. Right, let's uh, turn the engine on. Well, actually, first of all, let's turn the ignition on. Right, let's see now, is it gonna have 12 volts? No. No, it's not, okay. Let's turn the engine on. It's gonna be hard to fault find now if I have to keep turning the engine on. Yes, we have, 13 volts. So we've got voltage there. Now, let's just see if we've got anything here on the fans. Oh my God, we've got 13 volts, 14.4 volts on the fans. No. So I suppose the next thing we have to look at is this board under here to see what's happening there. Because we know the switch is okay, don't we? And if these were 40, these potentiometer things, then that, that would just affect the hot and cold. Right, let's uh, turn the engine off and let's see what's happening. Turn that off as well. Let's turn the battery off. Let's see what's happening under here. I'm gonna cut that cable tie. I did that just so things weren't under strain. I did one for here as well, so it's not hanging down on the wires. So now, what do we have here? This is going to be very hard to see. Is it down here? Or is it behind this thing? See, what we have there is, I presume, no, that's to do with the audio amp. So where's this special board? Oh, I can see ribbon cables. There is a board down here. I can see capacitors and transistors and like a heat sink. You're not gonna be able to see it because I can only see a tiny little hole. Let me try to get the camera to show you. You can see there the heat sink there and the ribbon cable just there as well. So now how am I gonna to get to that? Do I need to get to that? Uh, well, I suppose I need to trace where the wires go and they go to there and then I think from there they move on elsewhere. So I think I do need to get to that. This poor car is just getting more and more stripped. So now it looks like I need to pull this carpet back and then I need to take this carpet off here, which seems to be kind of glued to this. I'm thinking it feels like there's a kind of thin plastic or card or something. So I think I need to pull the carpet away from it and then uh, put it around down here. Uh, 
So I am curious as to what's down there. It did say to be careful of static shocks. Now, everything always says that, but you kind of know when you work on something like a Nintendo Switch or an Xbox, that 99.9% .9 of the time you're going to be okay. The problem is, this is from the 80s, and I do think static was a big thing back then. And I haven't got a wristband on me, but I suppose I could keep grounding myself on here, couldn't I? And that's going to be getting rid of the uh, static. So they really have buried this board very well, but I do need to get to it just for my own peace of mind to rule it out. So uh, yeah, while I'm doing that, I'll fast forward through it and I will shout out the massive. And the massive members are kitdigital.com, Kip Hakes, Max Rokotansky, Having Fun Repairs, Ellensburg Amplifier Repair and Service, Will Michaelis, Chris Seal, Felipe at MrKeeps.com, King Curd from Lobo Auto Sales, DJVG, Ellis Garbutt, Pigsy, Kenneth Blenstrop Sorensen, Simba Tinabu, Gabe McCandless, Extrem 401, Robert from Timsey's Auto Air, and Daniel Watson. Thank you guys. Right now, obviously fast forwarded through this did actually take me quite a while, but you don't need to see me struggle with that because it will just make the video unwatchable if it's too, too, too long. So here we have it out. Let's see if we can see anything that's wrong with it. We are free. We are free. Can see a little bit of corrosion. Just on this thing here, I don't know if it's a resistor or what it is. Just here, I can just see a tiny, tiny, tiny little bit. Can you see it on the board there, a little bit of white? Not much though. Do you know what those sort of relay things remind me of things that were on radio control cars years ago, these things. They clip down, they go like down when they're, when they're energized. They look just like what used to be on the old radio control cars, you know, like toy radio control ones, not Tamiya ones. I wonder, could it be as simple as the capacitors have uh, got old? That's nice, we've got a little carrier for the chip, a little socket for the chip, so the chip's easy to, to replace if you can get hold of them. Get, ah, we've got corrosion on this board, we have. We've definitely got corrosion, look up here. This is an ideal opportunity for uh, IPA. Look up here at this resistor here. It looks, it looks pretty bad. Can you see the corrosion on the board? Just here, this area here. So I'm gonna clean it with IPA, get the multimeter out and see if we have continuity. Okay, so I've put it on a bit of wood in the shed. Hopefully there's going to be no static here. I also noticed, it's really hard to see in the shed, it's so dark, but in between these resistor packs here, there's a lot of corrosion on that board there. There really, really is. So maybe a good clean with IPA. We'll get it all, uh, all sorted. This is isopropyl alcohol, 99.9%. I think when you do the testing and stuff, you've got to short these two pins here or put a jumper across them. It mentioned something about a jumper, so I'm thinking it must be them too. wondering is that a cold solder joint here look just here this one at the very end is it cracked just before it goes into that track doesn't look too healthy does it just there I'm gonna get the I brought my old soldier line down here I'm gonna get it on and I'm gonna go over that one it doesn't look like the capacitor has, uh, has leaked but we did have a bit of white stuff just here didn't we so maybe that has come out of the capacitor there's no bulges on it I suppose really I need to kind of Google this one and maybe people are saying what this board is used for and then uh, it would give me an idea of whether or not this would stop the fan from working completely. I 
Right, let's just see if we're getting anything. Yeah, that's a 10k resistor, so 10,000 ohm. And that's 560 ohms. This is a diode, let's just see if we're getting a reading one way. Yes. Yes, but that's probably because they're in parallel. Yeah, they're in parallel with the, uh, with the resistor. So I suppose you are going to get a reading. I don't think the corrosion on the board was bad enough. That's a thousand ohm to. Uh, yeah, thousand ohm. Uh, I don't think the corrosion was bad enough. Let's just make sure the capacitors haven't shorted. No, they look okay, and this one. And growing. Yeah, I'm sure that's fine. I think I'm going to pop it back in just to see whether or not it's going to start working. Okay, I've popped it back in and done up the screws because I didn't want to leave it loose because there is actually a ground point just underneath it there so if any of the circuits uh, the solder joins underneath it fell on that then uh, it could ground out so what I've done is I've just sprayed some of this on each of the connectors at the side so now if this makes no difference which I don't think it will what I will then do is from the fuse I'm going to put one of my obviously with the battery off I'm going to put one of my meter leads and I'm going to see on which connection it comes up here and then maybe we can it will give us an idea of where maybe where to look on the board or maybe I'll have a look at the wiring diagram again because I did think after the fuse it split off one went to here and one went to a splice so I'm thinking again it'd be more likely that it's a splice but look we did sort of find a little bit of corrosion on there so let's see if it has fixed it. Okay, here goes. Hmm, <laughs> nothing. Surely you don't have to have, maybe you have to have the door closed. One second, because there's aircon, bear with me. Hold on. Unless somehow it's linked like, to the interior lights or something, that it doesn't come on when they're on. I doubt it though. Absolutely nothing. Right, I think we need to get that connector off on both sides, because I don't actually know which is the feed. I presume it's that one. And then uh, see what's going on. Do you know what? This is, I think this is going to be a real difficult one. Hmm. Okay, so I connected the one lead of the meter to the top of the fuse. When I put it to the bottom of the fuse, I couldn't find it. But when I put it to the top, it's coming up on number one in here on the connector. There you go. I oh, know you can't see anything at all. And it's also coming up, I've got both connectors off, it's also coming up on one of the ones here. Somewhere in here, there you go. Bit strange how it's coming up on both sides. So it's because it goes off. I think it goes it, it, from the fuse, it then goes off, I presume, into the engine compartment. And see, it could, could go many different places. Do you know what I think I'm going to do next? If I have a look in here, some of them look quite bent up. Now, I think it's unlikely that it's going to be this, but you know, like with uh, NES, for example, a Nintendo Entertainment System, often the games don't work because these things are broken, but that's because they're, they're, they need to be inserted over and over again every single time you put a game in, while this doesn't. But they both look a little bit bent up, even this one in here. It doesn't look the best. So I'm just going to uh, put a little braddle in, and I'm just going to you know, close it up a little bit on both sides, just in case one or two of them are not making a good enough connection. And then uh, we'll pop it back on, start the engine, see if it makes any difference. And then if it doesn't, I think I need to put one probe there. I think I need to start looking in the engine compartment. I'm thinking it's something to do with a bad connection in there. Or what is that resistor pack about? Maybe it's to do with that resistor pack with the fins on. 
All right, here goes. No, it should be on now. It's like it's completely dead because even when I do these things here, it doesn't seem like anything's moving. There's no motors moving or anything like that. It's just like there's no power whatsoever. I think I'm gonna pop the bonnet. I'm gonna put a lead in the fuse and let's see if I can find out where the other end comes up. Right, so I've got it in the bottom. I've taken out the fuse. I've got it in the bottom one of F1, you know, the first fuse, the feeder fuse. What I did is I started the engine and I seen, without the fuse, I seen if the 12 volts was on the top or bottom. The 12 volts was on the top. Weird thing is, when I did the bottom one on continuity test, it wasn't coming up on that circuit board. It was coming up on the top one, but that's supposed to be the feed. I don't understand what's going on there, unless of course it's fed from elsewhere as well, I don't know. Anyway, so what I've done is I've got my probe in the bottom one, and I've got the other one here. So, now, I'm going to see if I can find out where it is coming up. Because maybe there's some other connector in, you know, for example, it could be in here, just off, off camera. Just uh, It could be in these connectors here for all I know. I'm concentrating here, but I don't really know where it goes to. So, no point in undoing that, because that is just the one going off to the motor. Let's try this one here. Right, so this must be the feed. It's not coming up there. So I'm just waiting, listening out for a tone. And then uh, that will tell me where where the, the fuse side, if it goes, because at this moment in time, I don't think anything's getting power. That's what I think, anyway. Right, so that's those ones there. So now I've got to check in here. Yay, excellent. Fantastic, we got it there. Right, let's leave that one out. Let's see if it's coming up elsewhere. Oh, it's, yes, it is. See, that's annoying. So it's coming up there as well. But that's okay. So there and there is in the same spot. Okay. And there. But that's back to front, so it's coming up the same, that's good. You see this is the other way round here. So it's the same one, if you were to flip this round, that's coming up there, that's good. Not coming up here, I wonder, is that normal? Oh no, it is coming up here. Yes, the same as that one. So it should be this one, yes. Now we're getting somewhere. This is going to be this side. Yeah. That's a hard one to come out, that one. This is going to be this side. Excellent. Right, so now... So that all feeds there. That will make more sense now when I look at the wiring diagram. So it all goes to the relays. And if it's going to the relays, they can't all be faulty, can they? Can't all be faulty. So I wonder now. I need to find out where it goes to after the relays, don't I? Do you know what? Let's just put these on random, randomly, so we know they're all the same. That's good. I felt like progress was made there. Well, actually, there is a diagram here saying what's what. So there's a diode in line. Okay, now we've swapped the relays round again. Let's see if it's doing anything different. So let's just start it up. We're in park. Oh my god, it's made a noise. Some motor moved down there. Right, what are we on here? We're on auto. I can hear movement. I can, can you? You're not going to be able to hear that. Let me turn this round. I think I can hear the fan, but... 
Hold on. I don't know where it's coming out of. Let's go up to, uh, there you go. Can you hear that? Where's it coming out? Oh, it's up here. Oh my God, and it's warm. No way. No way it's warm. I don't know if you can hear that or not. Let's put the microphone there. What? Right, now. What did I do there? Uh, relays, so it's something to do with the relays. Right, can you see it just gently wafting up there? Yeah, now I'm gonna put it to high. You ready? There you go. Look at that. And now if I go to off, I can hear it. I can hear them all closing. Can you see now it's gone completely flat? What a great visual. And now go to low. No, this is on Econ. I don't know what Econ is. Let me go to low. There you go. Look at that. Oh, isn't that good? Right, so what I think I need to do is... I think I need to change the relays one by one to see if they're faulty. I wonder, is there a way I can test the relays? That might be a better thing. So if I look in here... I can see there's a tiny little hole, you're not gonna see it, but it looks like the coil's going through this way. And that makes sense because now, if you put positive and negative on, then it's gonna flick over. So if you have a look at this diagram here, it will make more sense now. So this is the coil with this line in the middle. And when we put positive on the one next to the B, so this is gonna be the positive 12 here because we know it's coming from the fuse. When we go between here and here, it's gonna energize and the switch is gonna flick from here to here, like across, and then it's gonna liven up 87. So at the moment in the dead state, it's 87A, and then when it livens up, boom, it goes over to 87, which will be the one at the top. So now let me get the camera mounted and you'll hear it click. My thinking is, if it clicks, it should work. In fact, we should be able to test for voltage on here. We should see the 12 volts go from the middle onto the other one, I'm thinking. Okay, so hopefully you will hear it click. So I need to remember that this is the positive. Positive is gonna be by the B, which is this one here. So positive, let's hear the click. Hear that? So now, if I was to go there, I haven't got enough hands to do this, but we should then have continuity between 87 and, well, I presume, the positive or the negative. I'm not sure. Uh, let's have a look a minute. Right, so. Okay, so we haven't got any voltage there, but you can hear it clicking over. So is it because I need to put this elsewhere? Where would this need to go? Let me try this one up here. No, where am I going to get the 12 volts from? Let me try this one. No. Maybe it's not passing through. No, it has to be passing through voltage. No. Uh, I've gone on every one, haven't I? Maybe I need to just go for continuity. Let's have a look now. Right, now let's go off that. Ah, is that just it? Between this one here. I know, you can't see what I'm doing. Uh, between this bottom one here. So when I energize it, I'm getting continuity between here and here. So watch this. At the moment, there's nothing. And then if I go here, and here, then I've got it. Yeah. Right, so let me test all of them like that. And so I think that one's okay. I think that one's okay. See, some of these do look a little bit chalky, so maybe it's just a case of bad, bad contacts. 
and by me placing it in and out, it might have just made a good contact that particular time. Now when I put it in, it might be bad again. But I think it's definitely something to do with the relays. Unless it's just all coincidence. Only got one more left. Be nice if this one showed up as faulty. I don't think it is though. German equipment for you, you see. It's always a winner. Oh, happy days! Happy days! This one's not working. The very last one I tried. Let me just make sure. No way, look at that. So it's clipping, it's going across, but it's not working. It's making the right noises. Oh, look at that. How good is that? Right. Now, is it just badly corroded? I don't think so. So let's do that again. No, look at that. Isn't that amazing? Now, just double check. I'm going to get one more. One of the other ones again. Oh, this is brilliant. I love fault finding like this. Oh, look at that. So, it just goes to show if I didn't do the continuity test, I would have thought that was okay. But it's not okay. Let's just turn this off for the time being. It's, uh, there's something wrong with this one here. Even though it's clicking across, it's not clicking across. It is, but there's no continuity. So let's open this up here and see if we can see anything obvious with it. Might even be fixable. So there's little tabs on the side here. Good to know how to test them because there's plenty of other ones in this car. Now, what's happening? So there's no continuity to between these two. Why not? I wonder, is it just bad contacts? Right, I am going to just get this tiny bit of wet and dry just in case it's dirty. You know, if it's been arcing for a while, there might be a build-up of uh, black stuff on it. Oh, I don't think I'm going to bubble with the IPA. Just give it a spray with this. Right, let's see if that works. Oh, didn't turn this on. There he goes. There we go, listen to that. Sorry, this has come out. Ready? Oh, what, you worked once. You worked the first time. Right. What is the matter with you? Why are you so temperamental?
Maybe I shouldn't have put contact cleaner in there. There we go. Right, I am going to just get a cloth and try to dry up the contact cleaner I put in here just to make sure it's working when it's dry. Ready? Yeah, I think that is fixed. So, we need to make sure we put the lid back on the right way round. So it's that way, there, there. Turn it around, brush at the bottom. Right, so I'm glad I am. Oh, whoops, I nearly cut myself there. I'm glad I understand now how this, uh, how these relays work and how to test them. Was oh, that punched in okay? Yes. Right, let's see if it works with the cover on. Here goes. Fantastic. Right, okay, I think I'm gonna put it back in the car. I am not gonna put this one on that main one. I'm gonna have this on one of the different speeds. And uh, so I'm gonna leave that one to last. I put all the others in. Uh, because obviously that may not be as good as the others now because I've cleaned it, but how well have I cleaned it? I'm not too sure. Okay, so this is what I think. The faulty one that I've just fixed, I sprayed a bit of Hammerite black paint on so it looks different than the others. I think, you see this one here, the ACU fan control. I reckon maybe that that was this one here, you know, the faulty one. And maybe if that's gone, it stops it all from working. Either that or the water tap or this one, the comp clutch one. My guess is that one there had failed. So anyway, you've seen me fix it. So now let's see if it's gonna work. Well, it is gonna work, isn't it? Because it worked before. Right, I've got the battery on. I like hearing the little kind of clicks it makes. Now let's turn it on and start it up. And what's it doing here now? Right, let's put it all the way up top. There you go, instantly I can hear the motor kick in there. And in a few seconds it's going to start coming out here. I'm so happy with this, you know. I know I keep saying it, but this might have been one of my favorite fixes. Listen to that, the power on that. There you go, look at that. Flowing everywhere, yeah. Now let's put it on low. And the fact it's warm as well, it's just brilliant. And that is on low. Give it a few seconds. It makes a load of motor noises and then it, uh, then it changes. There we go. Takes a while, doesn't it? You can see now. Can you see? There you go. And now let's go to off. And it will drop back down. And lastly, let's go to high again, but it will take a few seconds. There we go, look at that. Fantastic. So, 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 so happy with that. Right, let's turn it off. And turn it off here. Wow, what a result. What a result, that is really, really good. So, the heater not working at all, which is a major, major inconvenience for the aircon and also the heat. It kind of makes the car unusable in the winter. Not working because of tarnish in the relay sort of 
burnt probably contacts where it's been maybe sparking for a bit as the contacts were getting worse it probably started sparking which created more carbon and then it made the connection go completely so a little bit of sandpaper i haven't had to spend any money just a bit of time and a few squirts here and there off the electrical cleaner but what a result because if you gave this to rolls royce to do that you would get charged an absolute fortune so uh, that is it for this video thank you so much for watching and subscribe if you haven't already and i will see you all very soon take care i get the vibe that you're distant there's something about you that's different i see Cause you're fading on We've been here before Tell me again, just tell me again And I'll make it right Don't go through that door Tell me again, just tell me again And I'll make it right It is a lie Nothing is wrong, just leave it be But I see it in your eyes Something isn't right Tell me again what I'm missing Cause you're fading out We've been here before Tell me again